settimane fa l'Istituto Bruno Leone ha organizzato un seminario a Torino dove sono stati discussi temi che riguardano il mercato, l'Europa e l'integrazione europea. Abbiamo chiesto ai più importanti economisti del mondo che cosa pensassero rispetto a temi come la Brexit, l'integrazione europea, le elezioni europee. Sentiamo le loro risposte. It would be a shame for the UK to leave uh, the EU because I, I personally believe that the UK has a, a common sense uh, liberal approach to economic policy. But I have a feeling that the, uh, the people of the, Europe, the uh, United Kingdom feel that there is not enough democracy in the EU. And I think they feel that many of the things they would like to decide are being decided elsewhere. And I think this loss of sovereignty, loss of uh, control is an issue that every European has to deal with. And we need to think again, if Brexit does occur, to deal with uh, this desire to have more sovereignty over your own affairs. Let's face it, Europe is not the United States. Uh, every European country is, has a, its own culture, its own uh, traditions, history, language, and uh, we need to respect that. And that means giving the people more say over local, local conditions and local policies. Well, uh, originally I wasn't for Brexit, but once the voters made the decision, I think it's best for some people to work it out uh, as best they can, as smooth as they can, and go ahead with it. Because as long as it's debatable, it causes uncertainty, so I'd like to, them to work it out and proceed with it in the most efficient way for everybody as possible. So that's what I've been arguing for. There's great debate. Who knows exactly what will happen? But I think some clarity, some certainty about what will happen is the most important thing to do right now. Well, I campaigned for Brexit because I thought we, the Britain needed free trade with the rest of the world and also it, control of its own regulation as opposed to being regulation set by the EU inside the single market. And also, you know, we, we're spending a lot of money in budget contributions for things that we don't benefit from, like French farmers. and. Uh, So if we leave, we, 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 we get rid of these things. We, we, we get the ability to strike free trade agreements around the world and also do our own regulation in areas like finance that are really important to us, energy, you know, labor market regulation, all these are very central to the operation of the British economy. And of course, finally, there's the issue of immigration, which is a very politically sensitive and also economically sensitive because unfortunately, Unskilled workers get full package of benefits from the taxpayer in the UK and a lot of these benefits are transferred to them by very poor people who, who are in the areas where they migrate to. So this has become a very important issue which has to be dealt with by um, making EU unskilled workers subject to the same, the same rules about migration that skilled workers are. Well, as we all know, the British people have voted clearly against remaining within the, the Union, the European Union. Um, I think they, they made a, a big mistake because uh, they had a very special and very privileged position in the Union. They, chose to opt out from different uh, projects like uh, monetary union, like Schengen, and they still benefited from the uh, no tariffs and uh, common uh, market for goods and services. So they had the best of all things because they were part of the union, but they had chosen to depart already from things that they didn't like. And uh, when they were called very imprudently by the government to give their advice through a referendum, they chose to, to leave. I think they did not have a very clear idea of what the consequences of that vote would be, and uh, in particular on uh, on UK future growth and on the question of Ireland. The question of Ireland is perhaps at the heart of all this affair because, as you know, uh, when the Brits were in the system, there was one market in Ireland because Ireland was part of the 
European Union and Northern Ireland was also part, in a way, of the same economic union. And uh, so there were no boundaries within uh, the I Ireland, uh, within Ireland. And uh, now the separation, the, the Brexit decision forces uh, the Brits to recoup, to regain their sovereign power uh, in terms of trade in Northern Ireland and therefore to impose a separation, a boundary with Southern Ireland. And given the, the peace after the civil war that ravaged Ireland for so many years, after that peace was won a few years ago, it's very problematic to tell the Irish, Irish people, well, sorry, you're going to have a new separation between the North and the South it could stir a lot of unrest. And this question was not even raised to the public opinion when, uh, when the Brexit vote took place. No one spoke of that. And they have discovered, after the vote, a number of possible consequences that could be very, uh, very damaging. Now, you know that for almost two years there has been a discussion between the British uh, government and, uh, and the Commission, Monsieur Barnier, in charge of the negotiation. They managed to get a deal, and that deal has been rejected uh, three times in the British Parliament. And now they, they say, we don't want we don't want the deal, but we don't want the Brexit without a deal. So uh, they're asking a lot. Well, in my view, Brexit is a complete disaster uh, for Britain, and it's bad news for the European Union. But we also know much more now than we did uh, two years ago, when a slim, a very slim majority of British citizens voted in favour of Brexit. First of all, we know that um, it's much harder to leave the European Union than um, a lot of the Brexit supporters had assumed, essentially because, um, and this is something that a lot of people in Britain haven't realized, European integration is much more than just about economics. It has very important constitutional and political implications. The good news, though, is that um, Brexit has not been um, a virus, it has been a vaccine. In other words, nobody is going to be in a hurry to leave the European Union now. I don't think anyone was, frankly, contrary to what a lot of Brexit supporters said. But the difficulties involved in the Brexit process have made it even less likely that others will follow the British road. What can we expect? Um, it's very, very difficult right now um, to predict with any degree of certainty, um, and um, among other reasons because this is destroying the British political system. Both major parties are totally divided, and of course the integrity of the U United Kingdom as a, as a union is also now in question because of uh, the rise of uh, Scottish nationalism. So I think the best we can hope for is um, a delayed Brexit, um, but one which will, I think, inevitably take place. I do not expect a second referendum contrary to what some people are saying, and I'm afraid that Brexit is inevitable. But it has been a disaster for the United Kingdom at every level. So in the case of a hard Brexit, what is called a hard Brexit, so a Brexit without uh, an agreement with the European Union, I think uh, the outcome could be very negative for the British economy. Uh, at the end of last year, uh, the Bank of England came out with a figure of uh, minus 10.5% uh, in the long term for GDP per capita. And people uh, said that they were doing politics, but I think this figure is realistic. If you look at studies about, uh, that are using different methodologies, uh, they, get, they get the same order of magnitude. So it doesn't make, mean 10% exactly, it can be 8 or 12, but it's negative over the long term. In the short term, there can be an additional effect which is related to the transition, if the transition is uh, uh, not well organized. So why is this figure so high? It's not just because of, uh, of trade and uh, increase in, uh, in tariffs, which should not be large. Uh, it's mostly the single market, which is uh, much more important than uh, custom union in that sense. Uh, so non-tariff barriers. 
uh, also, but on the top of that, you have uh, uh, disruption of uh, supply chains, uh, which will impact uh, productivity, and a, a disruption of immigration, which has been very positive for the British economy over the past, past decade, and also a fall in investment, which we, we have already seen in, in the UK. So, so I think the perspective for the UK is definitely negative. They, they could, of course, uh, depending on the agreement it, which is found at the end, they could limit uh, the negative uh, impact, but uh, I, don't see it, uh, I, I don't see why it could be positive. Well, I cannot speculate about the outcome. I mean, in these days, it's, everything is extremely, uh, extremely weird and extremely fuzzy. I'm not a fan, so I, uh, if they leave, as they probably will, I will miss them. Um, I'm not sure it's in the British interest, right? So this idea that once you get out, you get sovereignty, and then some liberal politicians will run the country as in the 19th century, I think is a little bit naive from those who now want the Brexit. Uh, I don't think it will be a tragedy or a disaster, but um, um, I wish we had found a way to, uh, to, let, to, to keep the Brits in the EU. Um, and f I think for the EU, it will basically mean that France will become more important, uh, the South probably will become more important, which I think being an Eastern European living in Germany is not the way I would like uh, the EU to develop. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what's going to happen. No one knows what's going to happen. It's, it's pazzo. It's completely insane. And no one in Britain knows and no one outside Britain knows. So I, I have opinions about it. I think it was an incredibly stupid thing to do. Uh, and it's much better to have Britain in the EU as a, as a liberal voice. Now when it's outside, I'm afraid that, that, that Europe will descend into still more um, protectionism and overregulation. Brexit, very short. It's a disaster. Uh, there are only losers in this game. Uh, I don't share views uh, represented by some colleagues in the UK that uh, they are now close to a new paradise of uh, economic policy. I think, I'm afraid, this will not materialize. And for the EU, it's a big loss, but the major burden has to be taken by the UK itself. I think uh, in, after Brexit, it will not take much time until they wake up and see what disaster they have uh, organized. I try not to think about Brexit. You ask me what I think about Brexit. Uh, I don't know what to think about Brexit. If I knew what was going to happen, I would be a, could be very soon a very rich man because I would go into the markets and bet on it. Um, I think we are in a period of complete disarray. We cannot, no one can predict what the outcome of the next couple of weeks is going to be. Um, you can see various different paths. Uh, it is even possible that the Prime Minister may get her deal, proposed deal, through a vote next week the third time. In principle, Parliament is not supposed to vote more than once on the same proposition, but uh, I expect that would be overruled. And it's possible that she may scare the Brexit fanatics uh, to the point where they say her deal is better than um, is better than what the alternative would be uh, because we now know that there will be some extension of the March 29 deadline unless we do something really stupid which is perfectly possible because many stupid things have been done so far. It can become a very sad story. Uh, in fact there is a lot of confusion uh, in, uh, in politics actually in, uh, in the UK it comes from the confusion of the people about the European Union uh, you have to remember that they applied uh, for the first time it was at uh, the time of de Gaulle was the president of the Republic in France and we refused them to come in and the second time they entered but I should say for many Brits reluctantly. So it was, it has been a, 
a long period of hesitation. And now we come to a moment which is extremely important, important for them, important for us. Uh, what will happen? Uh, no one knows. Uh, for the time being, I, I think that there are two scenarios. The first one is, is very sad. Uh, it is hard Brexit and we cannot exclude it, even though, as you know, the Parliament uh, voted against any uh, hard Brexit, that means without any deal uh, with, the, uh, with the European Union. But uh, unfortunately, it might happen, uh, and uh, the risk is very high. The second scenario uh, is an everyday less uh, probable. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, Theresa May would call for uh, a new referendum. Uh, because obviously, uh, when there was the first referendum, I'm not sure that the population was totally informed about the, the consequences of Brexit. Now they know, and uh, it, it would be a very democratic approach to come back to the electorate and to ask them what they want. If they want an hard, hard Brexit, then let us do it. Uh, if not, uh, okay, we forget about it. Uh, is, uh, this scenario is the best one. It is the best one for the UK, it would be the best, the, 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 the best one also for the European Union itself. Because we need the UK. The UK is in Europe. The UK is a great country. Uh, we, we need UK because the UK has uh, all its uh, place in the European Union and uh, it played uh, a major role in the right, right direction. And uh, I, uh, I, I would love that the Brits come back to, this, uh, to, their, uh, to their place in the European Union. Will it happen? I'm not sure. Eh, la Brexit è il grande fallimento di una classe dirigente che è quella britannica che per anni abbiamo intanto di, ammirato. Eh, in questo momento siamo a eh, pochi giorni dalla scadenza teorica eh, diciamo del, eh, del processo negoziale e non si è ancora arrivati ad alcuna conclusione. La ragione è molto semplice è che eh, la Gran Bretagna e in particolare i politici britannici non hanno deciso eh, cosa vogliono, cosa veramente, in cosa credono e quali sono, qual è la relazione che vogliono avere eh, con eh, l'Unione Europea. A questo punto è davvero molto difficile capire eh, quale sarà il diciamo, punto di caduta di, di questa situazione, eh, sicuramente, eh, anzi probabilmente ci sarà eh, un ritardo eh, del, diciamo, un, nella, nella decisione, eh, diciamo, nel momento in cui la Gran Bretagna lascerà eh, l'Unione Europea. Forse potrebbero esserci anche degli sviluppi più eh, diciamo, eh, improvvisi oppure eh, strani come appunto un, una nuova elezione, nuove elezioni oppure un nuovo referendum. Quel che è certo è che eh, siamo davanti a un momento storico. La Gran Bretagna per anni, soprattutto Londra, è stata diciamo, in una fase di incredibile espansione eh, e invece negli ultimi anni abbiamo visto l'incertezza arrivare nel Regno Unito che è un... Eh, diciamo un sentimento, un, eh, un qualcosa a cui sicuramente osservatori, investitori e ammiratori del, diciamo, della Gran Bretagna eh, non erano assolutamente abituati.